so I got to do it twice now. It looks well, like. We're live now. Oh, okay. We are we're live. live. Hey, we're hi, live we're on live. <laughs> yeah, we're live on Facebook Live. We're trying to work out all the details and all the technical things. And uh, look what happened. We became live. We're, we, are, we are alive. And really, that's what we want to talk about today, that Yeshua, Messiah, is alive. I'm Highland Slovakian. And uh, I'm the leader, the rabbi of Beit Tikva, Messianic congregation in Seattle area. Beit Tikva means house of hope. And uh, we've been doing this for quite a while. And with me is my cohort, uh, we used to joke and say in crime, but my cohort in the gospel, in the kingdom, Rabbi yeah. Stewart. Sometimes uh, Chantal, who's my wife of more than 40 years, we like to call ourselves the Bania and Clyde of the kingdom of God, meaning we're going to rob the kingdom of darkness in order to bring many souls into the kingdom of light. So <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to be here with you today, uh, Highland, and everyone who's listening. I'm Rabbi Stuart Winograd, co-founder of Reach Initiative International, uh, along with my wife, a Messianic Jewish ministry, ministering in Belarus, located between Russia and Poland, India, North America, and another place you may have heard of, Israel. Sometimes I call Israel the not yet holy land, but it's going to be the holy land because sadly so many of our Jewish people, Highland, do not yet know the uh, love and salvation of Messiah Yeshua and are living in rebellion to his holy ways, the holy ways of the God of Israel. And so I say, Israel's not yet the holy land. We hope uh, that that will happen soon. It is the promised land, and it is the homeland of the Jewish people. I love that land. And as you know, uh, Israel has opened its borders now uh, to family members of Israeli citizens. And I, my oldest daughter, Miriam, is there with my two granddaughters, my son-in-law. And uh, God willing, we're waiting for the Israeli consulate to approve our application for entering Israel. It's a whole complicated thing. God willing, we will be flying to Israel next Thursday, May 6th. So uh, for those of you who are praying out there, we'd appreciate your prayers in this regard because uh, we, we, we hope to hear soon. Wow, that was my phone. We hope to hear soon from the Israeli consulate. We, we hope it's not gonna wait for the very last minute. So, and because of that, I guess I should announce, uh, this will be our last Facebook Live for a little while because I'll be in another time zone for the next couple of months. And uh, so we'll be back in touch with you when we renew these uh, Facebook Lives. We wanna continue when I get back from Israel and uh, if you've missed any of the past episodes and uh, or if you're going to like this one and want to catch it again or share it with a friend, you can catch uh, past episodes on the Beit Tikva Messianic Congregation Facebook page, the Reach Initiative International Facebook page, and the Reach Initiative International website, reach, R-E-A-C-H-I-I, -I, reachii.org, so you can catch all of the past episodes, they're recorded. You can share them and uh, use them in any way that you feel would be beneficial. Uh, Rabbi Highland, we lost your video. Are you back? Oh, oh. oh I'm back. Sorry. There you go. I mean, those that. beautiful mountains and, and uh, sea behind you. We need to. That's where I live. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. So back to our subject. Uh, we wanted to end. Uh, this season, before we take a, a break for the summer months, we wanted to end this season on an uplifting high note. And so we've called this episode, He's Alive. And who is the He? He's the one who was promised to the people of Israel throughout the centuries, from the days of, of uh, Moses, all of the Jewish prophets, the Messiah. And uh, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, spoke of the reality that Messiah would come and die for our sins, but he wouldn't stay in the grave, and he wouldn't be simply a 
warrior or a political leader. He would be a suffering servant first who would die for our sins, but he wouldn't be dead forever. He would mm -hmm. rise from the grave after three days. And we are here to proclaim from experience and from the word of God that Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel, he is alive. Yeah, I, I really like what um, Josh McDowell said. He, he, wrote, he wrote a book called um, uh, More Than a Carpenter. In that mm -hmm. book, he says that Yeshua uh, is either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord he claimed to be. And uh, so it, when you look, actually, if you did a study on the resurrection uh, and you use it on biblical accuracy because it's the it's the resur it's the bible that we have as our, our our primary book of history on on this time period but also through josephus and other and other books and other writings um the resurrection is really a well-founded uh piece of history it actually happened and so what we want to talk about today is some of the appearances post-resurrection when yeshua rose from the dead just like rabbi stewart said he, he died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. By the way, just a little side note, I don't believe it was a part of three separate days, but it was three days and three nights, because that's what Yeshua said. Like Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be. So it wasn't Good Friday. It was probably Thursday. It could have been Wednesday, depending on your counting. But anyway, and then again depending on your counting. We're in the middle of counting the Omer. The Omer was something, counting the Omer was something that God uh, commanded Israel to do, and not just Israel, but anyone who celebrates the appointed times of the Lord, that's Jews and Gentiles. Um, although he gave it to Israel, it applies to all of us. The counting from um, the day after the Sabbath of Passover, 50 days until Shavuot, which uh, will be in, in just, just about three weeks from now. I'm looking at my calendar here. And so yeah, people, uh, what an Omer is, and, uh, and also Shavuot is also known in the English language as Pentecost, 50 days after Passover. Yeah. So and there are Lord different ways, God. there are different ways of counting the Omer as well, depending on when you start counting. And I don't want to get into all that thing, all that counting and calendars today, because it's, quite a topic. However, we are in the middle, or maybe uh, uh, four sevenths, because we've got seven weeks that we're counting the Omer, 50 days, seven Shabbats, seven Sabbaths plus one. If you count seven Sabbaths plus one, you always end up on the first day of the week. So that's the way we count. And we end, it's going to be May 23rd for us this year. The Jewish community, it's going to be a little bit earlier for a couple of reasons, which we're not going to go into today. We want to focus on what happened during this time period, during this, the 40 days from the resurrection, Yeshua appeared yeah. numerous times to the disciples. I and I wanted to begin with one of them, if I can, Stuart. Yeah, let me just introduce it with a passage that uh, uh, Rabbi Shol, the Apostle Paul, so people get an, an overview sure. right here. Right. Uh, this comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, I'm going to emphasize uh, the last few verses that I read, but I want to read it in context. So he says, now, brothers and sisters, this is 15, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the good news I preach to you, which you have received and on which you have taken your stand. By this good news, or also known as the gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word that was preached to you. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. That is that Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures, the scriptures he's referring to is the Tanakh Old Testament, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, 
All of this was foretold in the Tanakh in the Old Testament. And that he appeared, he appeared to Shimon Kepha, Peter, and then to the 12, his 12 Jewish Talmudim disciples. And after that, verse 6, he appeared to more than 500, 500 at the same time, most of whom are still leave, living, though some have fallen asleep in that day that Paul wrote it. Then he appeared to James, Yaakov, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also. And so this was not done in secret. And so I just wanted to give people an overview that uh, we're talking about more than 500 people who Yeshua appeared to during those 40 days after his resurrection. And uh, I just want to introduce, uh, then I want to give it to you, I want to introduce a uh, resource I want to make available to folks written by a, a good friend of mine. His name is Jim Jacob. He's an attorney. He's a lawyer. And uh, he wrote a book called A Lawyer's Case for the Resurrection. And uh, I invite you to uh, make your request known on the reachii.org website or uh, on our Facebook site where you're watching this right now. Uh, request that. That is a powerful, powerful little book uh, giving you evidence that no lawyer can dispute so if you're a seeker, if you're a Jewish person wondering, did Yeshua really rise from the dead? My friend Jim Jacob gives you a lawyer's case that cannot, I mean, it would win every Supreme Court battle. So uh, you're going to want to get a hold of a lawyer's case for the resurrection. It's free of charge. Just ask for it on the reachii.org website or on the Reach Initiative Facebook page. Okay. Well, you know, Stuart, when I first came to the Lord, when, when I was reading the Bible for the first time 50 years ago, plus 50 plus years ago, um, everything made a lot of sense to me. The resurrection was probably the, the last aspect, the last thing that I had to accept because it was hard for me to accept the resurrection. So it's interesting you had mentioned that. Then I started reading books and, and there were some other things written back then that are similar to, similar to what uh, Mr. Jacobs wrote about the resurrection. And um, Josh McDowell also wrote another book, um, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And in there he talks about similar, kind. Josh McDowell was an attorney seeking to disprove the Bible. And what happened? He became a believer, right? So. And then finally, I was able to accept the resurrection. And that's when my whole life changed. I finally had sort of like the, the fullness of the gospel, the fullness of the good news um, in my life. And so I, I want to talk today just for a minute. Um, and we're talking about uh, the resurrection appearances of Yeshua. And I appreciate you bring, reading that verse from 1 Corinthians 15. I want to encourage our readers, if you have a Bible, to go there and see what uh, the famous Rabbi Shaul said. Uh, about that verse, but there were in, in Luke chapter 24, there were two of Yeshua's disciples. They were walking on a road, the road to um, Ameosh or Emmaus, we say in, in English. Um, and and they, were, they were kind of depressed. They were discouraged. Uh, he, they didn't know about the resurrection yet. They, they had left Jerusalem. They're walking away and, and Yeshua appears to them on the road and they don't know it's him. But they just were chatting with him as they were walking. And, um, and he was asking them questions about the Messiah and why are they discouraged? And what's going on in Jerusalem these days? You know, what's the latest news? And they basically say, well, haven't you heard? Yeshua is crucified. And so he's walking with them. It, 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 it make a, a really great movie. Maybe it's been done already. They've done um, it. Great movie. I've seen it. I've What's seen the movie? That it, I forget the name, but uh, I'm not good at remembering names of movies, unfortunately. But it was really wonderful, and uh, 
It wasn't the only scene, but it, uh, it was one of the primary scenes in the movie. All right, sounds awesome. So he's asking these questions, then they're ask, answering him, and they don't know who he is yet, and they're talking about their discouragement, and then he says to them, oh, foolish man, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Um, was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, Yeshua explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. What scriptures? Well, that's right. And so I want to talk about some of those scriptures today, because as, as, a, as a Jewish man, I look, Moses, I know about Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, Moses, our rabbi, and uh, beginning with the prophets, I knew about the prophets, but what do they say? So I'm just going to give a few of them, and, and Stuart, chime in any time. Um, so, so here's a few of the scriptures. First of all, in Genesis 12, 3. Um, before you jump, did they, they said that Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, the scriptures, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And we saw that happen in uh, uh, we know by the end of the first century in Jerusalem and Judea alone, there were more than 100,000 Jewish followers of Yeshua, Messianic Jews, uh, after his resurrection and ascension, Yeshua's resurrection and ascension. So, you know, the reason the Jewish people were following was because they saw it in the scriptures and because they experienced him being alive. And, you know, it was interesting, Highland, before you jump to the Old Testament scriptures, you said that for you, the hardest thing to accept was the resurrection. For me, that was an easy thing to accept in my experience. And the reason it was is because what convinced me that he was alive was that his presence came into my life. Uh, as I began to read the scriptures and seek God. And so I realized when they spoke of the resurrection and the gentleman who introduced me to Yeshua said, you know, uh, I said to him, hey, Michael, uh, there's this presence in my life and it's huge and uh, it's powerful uh, and it kind of scares me. And he said, oh, don't worry about that. It's just what I told you. If you'll take a step toward Yeshua, he'll take a step toward you. And I told you, he's alive. He's risen from the grave. And so, and so that was my experience. I kept experiencing him, his presence, by his spirit. It wasn't a fleshly Yeshua. It was the spirit of the resurrected Messiah, Yeshua, that was coming to me. It was Yeshua in spirit, and uh, he's with me to this day, as he is with you and all that have committed their lives to him, and uh, it's amazing. So, you know, people come to know Yeshua intellectually by studying scriptures, prophecies, etc., and that's fine. Others come more experientially. Uh, I came with a combination, experiencing and, and seeking and studying, and so I encourage people to seek for both. If you're a seeker, if you're looking for truth, if you want to really know, seek for both the experience of his reality that he is alive, that he rose from the dead, and check the scriptures, the prophecies, and, and uh, prove them out intellectually and see how reliable and accurate they are and how they point to one and only throughout history. Yeshua, Jesus. Yeah, maybe maybe this will be part one, but we had talked about this for a long time. But there were, uh, as a Jewish man, uh, when I realized that there were other uh, references in the Bible to resurrection in the Hebrew scriptures, and that there were some resurrection that took place, that, well, this isn't something brand new created by Gentiles, right? This is, uh, this is you said the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, talk about it as well. So that was one thing that was important. The second thing that I remembered, uh, before I get into a few scriptures in the Hebrew Bible, I'm, I used to talk about the Bible, or, or 
or the uh, Old Testament, and my dad would say, "You mean you mean the Hebrew Bible? You mean the Bible, right?" Because uh, I use yeah. I use Tanakh, Hebrew Scriptures, or Old Testament, just so people know what we're talking about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I knew why you did that. But okay, so so um, Scripture says that Yeshua rose bodily from the dead. Okay, it wasn't just some spirit of him rose from the dead he rose bodily uh, out of the grave the grave cloths were left in the tomb they saw him alive he appeared many many times to 500 at one time etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so he rose bodily from the dead so part of uh, our our understanding of scripture is that yeshua being the messiah being god in the flesh god incarnate uh it was his shedding of blood was for the forgiveness of sin for everyone, all people, all, all creation. And so because he rose bodily from the dead, his blood is still flowing through his, his veins. So his blood is, the, the sacrifice of his blood is available and applicable to everyone post-resurrection. That's you and me and everyone else because he's alive today. A uh, little little side point, little theological side point there, that uh, his blood is still flowing, and his blood is what was responsible for the sacrifice of our sin. So anyway, let's remember: blood is life. The blood of a creature is the life of the creature, and so you can kind of meditate on that and think about that. That's why he had to shed his innocent blood, so right. that. And he was completely innocent. He never broke God's commands. Never broke God's laws. Life is in the blood. Uh, yeah, he Again. fulfilled every aspect of Torah, the uh, teachings of Moses, the five books of Moses, and everything in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. And so we must remember that he was our Yom Kippur, really. He was our Kippura. He was the one who atoned for our sins according to the justice of of God, according to the judgment and the court of God, the righteous judge God. Now, you may not understand it fully, but you can get to understand it step by step more and more like anything else. And you can understand that God loves you. And he sent Yeshua to set you and me free from the bondage of sin and death. And that's why through Yeshua, we not only have forgiveness of sins, but because he rose from the dead, he also takes us and we have eternal life. When this body falls to the ground, that's not the end. We live forever with Yeshua in heaven. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And because life is in the blood, it says in Vayikha or Leviticus that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Yes. So that's what God created a system of how to draw near to him and that system involves sacrifice when we sinned blood had to be shed so an animal's blood would be shed and when yeshua came he was the sacrifice to end all the sacrifices for sin and therefore you know animal lovers and animal activists uh should be very very happy that Yeshua came because all these animals weren't being sacrificed any longer. Yes. You know? So um, give us one of your uh, um, most encouraging or favorite scriptures from Tanakh, the Old Testament, uh, that speaks about Yeshua's death and resurrection. Yeah. So I'm going to give you more. I'm just going to give you a couple. So again, if you're just tuning in, I'm Highland Slobotkin with Stuart Winograd um, across the nation. We're on the two coasts. We, we're kind of bi-coastal here, not bipolar, but bi-coastal. Um, hey, if we were on the North Pole and the South Pole, we, we'd be bipolar, right? Just came to me. Okay. Um, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus um, met Yeshua. They didn't know who he was. But then he said, and then it said, beginning with Moses, with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scripture. Then he said, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Then he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining 
the scriptures to us. Wouldn't you have loved to be there? Mm -hmm. You know, just a encounter that 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 encounter must have been uh, just spectacular. So a, a couple things in Genesis 12, um, the Lord spoke to Moses and said that all the families of the earth would be blessed through Avram to Abraham. All the families have been blessed through Yeshua. In Numbers 21, it says, so Moses made a bronze snake, put it on a pole. And it happened that whenever a snake bit anyone, he looked at the bronze snake, he lived, okay? Yeshua said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, Moses said, Adonai, your God, will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brothers. To him you must listen. John 1, 45. Philip finds Nathanael and says to him, we found the one that Moses in the Torah and also the prophets wrote about, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then Yeshua said in John 5, he said, for if you were believing Moses, you would believe me because he wrote about me. But since you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? And then there's lots of scriptures, as you know, Rabbi Stewart, from the prophets, Isaiah 7, 14, a, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. You will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And then we have the fulfillment in Matthew 1. You will name him Yeshua. He will save his people from their sins and he will be Emmanuel. And uh, I have a ton of scriptures here that we could go over from the prophets. Yeah, I want to go over one here. This, what, this whole concept that I'm going to address now really troubled me in my first couple of years with the Lord until I got understanding. And how did I get understanding? Someone taught me about the Jewishness of the scripture and a Jewish way to understand it. And even though I was Jewish, I had grown up in a secular family. I didn't know all of these things. So there's a... Uh, there's a way that Jewish people teach sometimes, and Yeshua did, it's called remez or hinting. And so it always troubled me when he said, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I'm thinking, what kind of loving father is that? You know, Abba, father, why are you forsaking your only begotten son? He's, he's being tormented on this cross and uh, everything is like being poured out of him. His life is being ended, and he feels forsaken. But that's not really what happened. See, he was alluding to Psalm 22, which starts with, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then if you continue to read through that, that psalm, you come to verse 21, and it says, rescue me from the mouth of the lions, save me from the horns of the wild oxen, meaning, you know, it's symbolic language. And then it says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. Wait a minute, it started out like forsaken, rejected, forsaken. No, Something's going on. There's a mystery being revealed right from the cross as Yeshua is speaking these words. And this is what the mystery is. Uh, all you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him, all you descendants of Israel. Why? And the key is verse 24. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but he has listened to his cry for help. And so God really, uh, this is my firm point of view, did not forsake Yeshua on the cross. On the contrary, Yeshua was instructing everyone uh, around that had ears to hear and were open-minded. This is what's really going on. It looks like I'm forsaken, it looks like everything is over. It looks like I'm being accursed. It looks like God is not going to rescue me. But on the contrary, it's all part of the plan. It looks like it, 
I'm going to go into the grave, and then I'm going to proclaim him to my brothers and sisters in Israel, and this salvation that I have brought to the world through my death, Yeshua's death, will go throughout it, all Israel and unto the ends of the earth. Amen. So this was an amazing prophetic utterance, and we had to understand, it's misunderstood so often that you have to understand a Jewish mindset and a Jewish way of teaching. Yeshua was a Jewish rabbi. He was a Jewish prophet. He was more than a Jewish rabbi and a Jewish prophet. He was the unique son of God, sinless, who died for our sins and rose from the dead. And after 40 days of appearing to hundreds of Jewish people, he ascended into heaven. You, we got wow. some time, a little time. Let's. You got another Tanakh Old Testament scripture for us about he's risen, he's alive. That's good stuff. So here's another one. So again, if you're tuning in, uh, we're talking about the resurrection appearances in the 40 days after the resurrection, Yeshua appeared and uh, it says, beginning with Moses, with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. Here's another one, Isaiah 9. Unto us a child is born, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. So a son, this is interesting, a son will be born, and the son is also the father. The son will be called the father, okay, and the Prince of Peace, our Shalom. And um, Isaiah 11, uh, a shoot will come forth from the stem of of Jesse, Jesse was uh, King David's father, and a branch will bear fruit out of his roots. The Ruach of Adonai, the Spirit of God, will rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and insight, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord, the fear of Adonai. So a uh, shoot, Yeshua, came forth from the line of Jesse, the line of David, and that is Yeshua. Here's another one, a famous one, Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne, and this is talking about the servant in Isaiah 53. Surely mm -hmm. he has borne our griefs and carried our pains. Yet we esteemed him stricken, struck by God and afflicted. He was pierced because of our transgressions, crushed because of our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So he was pierced. He was striped, sounds like the matzah we use for Passover. And, and, and this is one of those scriptures that just shouted out to me that the prophet Isaiah, six to 700 years, maybe 800 years before the time of Messiah, before the time of Yeshua, described exactly what his death would be like and why he would come. It's, it's so powerful, you know, uh, the difference between our faith as Messianic Jews and uh, born-again Christians around the world is that we believe in a risen Savior. He's alive. You know, uh, um, many Orthodox Jews believe that the Lubavitch Rabbi Schneerson uh, was Messiah. The problem was he never was in the land of Israel, so he could have, he could not have fulfilled all the prophecies that state Messiah would be born in the land of Israel. Plus, everybody goes to his grave. The reason they go to his grave is because he's still there. He has not risen. Nobody goes to Yeshua's grave because he's not there. And you know, <laughs> hundreds of our Breslev Jewish brothers, they go to the city of Uman in U Ukraine, why? They go to visit the grave of their rabbi. We can visit our rabbi anywhere in the world because he is alive and he, is, he, is, he is everywhere. And uh, so it's a great difference. No other faith, no other faith on this earth is worshiping a living, resurrected Savior. 
Hallelujah. Eklev Rabbi is in his grave. And let me just read this because a lot of people don't understand resurrection is a Jewish concept from the book of Daniel, chapter 12. Daniel is our great Jewish prophet, another great Jewish prophet. Jewish brothers and sisters, this is for us. It says in verse 2 of Daniel 12, multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. So we will rise. We will rise. And that's for sure. And, you know, another thing interesting in the book of Daniel, we don't have time to get into it, but a, a very well-respected uh, rabbi in North America named Daniel, Daniel Boyerin wrote an excellent book, uh, the title slipping from my mind, you might remember it. But in this book, he is not a follower of Yeshua, but he demonstrated very clearly because he was being intellectually honest, very clearly that Yeshua as the son of man is very comparable to the son of man spoken of in uh, the book of Daniel, who is from ancient of days, meaning from eternity. And so we have so much evidence, and even today, many Jewish rabbis and scholars are saying he could have been the Messiah. They're not ready to take that leap, many of them, but many of them who are being intellectually honest saying he could have been. And what else is very interesting, Rabbi Hyland, is that many Jewish scholars, many Jewish leaders are seeking to reclaim Jesus, Yeshua, for the Jewish community, meaning saying he was a Jew, and look at all the great things he did around the world. For so many centuries, our Jewish people wanted to separate themselves from Yeshua, Jesus, because of many reasons, including persecution by so-called Christians of Jewish people in, in Europe for centuries. But today, and this is a sign of the times, Jewish people uh, scholars and and uh, rabbis and just uh, ordinary Jewish people that are not scholars and rabbis are seeking to reclaim Yeshua as a Jew and one who we should respect and appreciate because look at all of the great things that have been done in his name and look at his teachings that are so wonderfully Jewish and preach love and kindness and respect of your fellow man. It's the answer to the race problem. It's the answer to the anti-Semitism problem. It's the answer to the Israel-Palestinian problem. He is the answer. Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Yeshua, he's alive. He's the answer to all problems, really. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. So speaking, speaking of Daniel, Daniel said in chapter 7, uh, he said, behold, one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. Um, and he will, uh, he brought his presence and dominion and glory. And then Yeshua says in Matthew 24, the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the land will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Just almost word for word from Daniel chapter 7. And, and then here's a verse that really spoke to me when I was coming to the Lord and I was, I was um, contemplating, is Yeshua the Messiah? And it was Micah 5.1 or 5.2, depending which you have the Hebrew or the English version. It says, but you, Bethlehem Ephrata, or for you, Bethlehem Ephrata, which is kind of like saying, um, I don't know what cities you have close to each other. Here, it'd be like saying Seattle Bellevue or... Uh, Seattle, Linwood, uh, two cities are very close together, okay? These were small cities, Bethlehem, Ephrata. They are, you are least among the clans of Judah because you were small, but from you will come out to me or come forth for me, one who will be ruler in Israel, one, one whose goings forth are from old, from the days of eternity. And so I just thought to myself, okay, this is really simple. Uh, a leader of Israel is going to come out of Bethlehem or Ephrata or that area, 
and this person uh, who comes from there, their goings forth or their their life will be from the days of eternity. And some versions say from from everlasting to everlasting. And I thought to myself, well, that can only be God. What God is going to come from Bethlehem, the Son of God, the Son of Man, uh, incarnate one Yeshua, born in Beit Lechem, the house of bread, would be the ruler from Israel. And that just spoke to me. I said, okay. This sounds like Micah is prophesying Yeshua very clearly. Very clearly. There is so much evidence for the life, death, and resurrection of Yeshua. He's alive. I want to again offer to you a free resource, an excellent book written by a good friend of mine, an attorney at law, Jim Jacobs. It's called A Lawyer's Case for the Resurrection. I'm telling you that if you are a seeker, there is so much evidence in this book presented by a lawyer that is irrefutable, unmistakable, and it would win in every Supreme Court battle. It wins in the Supreme Court of Heaven for sure. And uh, so you can get this book free of charge Anybody can get it, but I especially want to encourage anybody who's seeking and and, uh, uh, Jewish friends and non-Jewish friends, if you're seeking, could the resurrection be real? A lawyer's case for the resurrection, Jim Jacobs, ask for it free of charge. Go to our website, reach, R-E-A-C-H-I-I dot org, or request it on the Reach Initiative International Facebook page. And we will be sure to get this to you. So it's very uh, nice of you, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I want to get resources into people's hands that are going to help them to know the truth because you and I know the truth set us free. It's given us peace. Shalom. Amen. Simcha, you know, there's joy and purpose. There's, there's a lot more scriptures that we could share, but let me share one more. Go for this, it. This is from Proverbs. 30 proverbs chapter 30 verse 4 i love that who has gone up into heaven and who has come down who has gathered the wind in the palm of his hand who has wrapped the waters in a cloak who has established all the ends of the earth now the answer is rhetorical i mean who did all these Stuart? if i were to ask you um objectively who is the writer of Proverbs talking about? Is it my Uncle Joe? No, it's the Creator God. Oh! Who has established all these things? The, the of ends course. of the earth. We're talking about God Himself, right? The Almighty God. No matter what you believe about Messiah, Proverbs 30 is talking about the creation being created by Almighty God. And then the next line says this What is His name? And, and what? what is the name of his of his son, if you know? Yeshua. Isn't that amazing that the writer of Proverbs I says, what is the name of the son of creator God, if you know? This was written a little while before Yeshua appeared on the earth, like yeah, uh, about a thousand years. Yeah, a little while. So... Uh, You know, Yeshua had nothing to do with that, and uh, Christians had nothing to do with that. Uh, Buddhists had nothing to do with that. Hindus had nothing to do. This was written by Jewish people who knew the God of Israel and were beginning to get an understanding of some of the mysteries of life. I got to share one more thing, Stuart. Stuart, and that that is that um, because... Our time is almost up here. I'm looking at my clock down here on my, on my computer screen. And that is this, that, um, again, from a Jewish perspective, I, 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 and you mentioned this, that Christians didn't write that from, you know, from Proverbs 30. Of course not. But, but I used to wonder if, if Christians had taken our scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, and tweaked them to make it fit that Yeshua was the Messiah and that they created these these. No, the, they tweaked the prophets and they made these changes yeah. in order. I wondered to, also. You thought that too? 
Yeah, that's why I bought a, a, a scriptures uh, that uh, are traditionally uh, 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 used in the Jewish world right. and translated by a uh, by Jewish people and published by a Jewish publishing company. Yeah. So, so this was my goal when we went to Israel. My wife and I we lived in Israel for a year. We studied Hebrew. The goal was to read Hebrew well enough to read the Hebrew scriptures. That was what we wanted to do. And you know what? We, well, my wife isn't, she would tell you that I'm better than she is, but uh, I can read the Hebrew scriptures anyway. Um, and there was one, this one scripture that really stuck out to me because it was, you, you mentioned Psalm 22. There's, there's one uh, line in Psalm 22 that says, they pierced my hands and my feet. Ka'aru, uh, yadai v'raglai, and, and, but in most of our Bibles, it says ka'ari, which means like a lion. Arie is a lion. Ka'ari or ka'ari is like a lion at my hands and my feet. So, it, and I went to the rabbis in Jerusalem and I said, what does this say? And he said, well, it says like a lion. Well, this is very important. When the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1947, and I think it was Martin Abeg and um, Peter Flint were the translators of the religious portions of the scrolls. And they came to Psalm 22 was found in, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it, it didn't say Ka'ari, like a lion. It said Ka'aru, they pierced. And I just began to weep when I heard that. My, my, I had this question for like 30 years about that verse. And sure enough, God just answered me. And it doesn't say like a lion. It says, and they pierced my hands and my feet. The prophet David describing Yeshua on the cross. And to me, that was like, that was like the, the, the what? The... The clincher. The final straw of a clincher. I said, okay, I believe. Yeah. I believe. This you know, some people get really stuck when they can't understand something. And I just want to encourage folks. You know, if you were a student of physics, would you understand it all in one year, two years? You're talking about the God of creation. You're not going to understand everything about him in one year or two years, but you can understand that the prophetic words of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, are real, they are mm. true, and they have been fulfilled. Those that spoke of Messiah, there's others also, they have been fulfilled in Yeshua. You can see that, you can evaluate it, you can get revelation on it as well. And also, even though you may not understand everything, you can understand that God is good, that God is merciful, he loves you, and he wants to forgive your sins and have fellowship with you and give you purpose, peace, and mm -hmm. joy. And so uh, don't get stuck. Get a hold of that book I was offering if you're, if you're really seeking A Lawyer's Case for God by Jim Jacob, a good friend of mine, Irrefutable Evidence, A Lawyer's Case for the Resurrection, Irrefutable Evidence, that Yeshua is risen from the dead. He rose. He's resurrected. Hallelujah. And it's going to change the way you look at things. And uh, I think you're going to be glad that you did. And uh, I guess we're going to pray for you right now. I think since Highland, in those some may have missed our announcement at the beginning, uh, we're going to be taking a break now for a couple of months because I'm going to Israel. And uh, we'll pick it up when I get back and we'll uh, keep you posted through Facebook, et cetera, on when we're going to pick it up uh, again. But you can catch this episode again and, and all of the past episodes, as I mentioned before, on the Beit Tikva Messianic Congregation Seattle Facebook page, the Reach Initiative International Facebook page, and uh, our website, reach, R-E-A-C-H-I-I dot org website page all of all of the past episodes and more and you can uh, 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 listen to them watch them share them with a friend uh, so we're gonna this is our last episode for a couple of months or so and uh, we're gonna both pray today since it's our last um, 
So I'll start and I'll let you conclude. How's that? Sure. All righty. Avinu Malkenu, great and mighty, awesome God that is way beyond us, way above us, yet, yet you are our Abba, our Father, and you love us, and you welcome us, you create an avenue for us to fellowship with you daily. I am so grateful that Yeshua is the way, he's the truth, and he is the life, and that indeed he fulfilled all of the prophetic words in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, regarding Messiah, and he died for our sins and rose from the dead, and he is alive today, and his grace and mercy are available to everyone who will say, yes, it's a free gift. It's a free gift. Lord, I'm so grateful for the free gift. I'm so grateful that you made me aware of it and you helped me in your kindness to take hold of the free gift of forgiveness, fellowship with you and the promise of eternal life and that the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh would make his home inside of me. Lord, 44 years ago, I'm so grateful. You gave me purpose, you gave me peace you gave me joy, and you are with me through difficult times and through uh, good times, through successes and failures. I am so grateful. And Father, I want to pray for everyone uh, out in the audience. I ask, I ask, Lord, that uh, <coughs> for those that know you in this season of their life, they would not be content but they would be content. What do I mean? That they would stretch forth out of a place of, of depth of intimacy with you. They would stretch forth to know you better, to know you deeper, and to allow you to do a deeper and fuller work in them through use, through them, so that they would be blessed and be a blessing to people around. People so much need the love and truth of the God of Israel, of Yeshua, the Messiah. And for those who are seeking and looking for answers to my Jewish friends and, and non-Jewish friends, I pray, Father, that uh, in this season of their life, they would put a, forth a little effort, that they would get hold of the book that I offered, that they would study the, the scriptures and the prophecies, that they would read the four stories, the Gospels of Yeshua written by Jewish authors, and that they would say, if this is true, God of creation, show me, and I know that you will. I pray that you give them revelation. I pray that you would draw them, draw them to the lover of their souls, the one and only who was anointed as the kapora to be the atonement for their sins, He's alive. Reveal yourself to them, O risen Lord Yeshua, Messiah of Israel and Savior of the world. Thank you for the great privilege of, of, of being able to share life with you on this earth, Lord, because you indeed are the way, the truth, and the life, and our purpose, our joy, and our peace. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, yes, man. Lord, I thank you for your scriptures. Thank you for your words, uh, uh, the, the Bible. Uh, we have it written by 44 different authors, uh, 66 books over a period of about 1,600 years, and yet they form one cohesive whole. They form one message that you are real and that you had a plan from the beginning. And the plan was to redeem mankind from, from sin, to give us forgiveness of our uh, sins, for our sins, and to offer us everlasting life for those who trust in you will live forever. Otherwise, Lord, why even be here? Otherwise, life is meaningless without you. So I pray for all, all of our friends and relatives, uh, Jewish friends and relatives, and non-Jewish friends and relatives, and those who are listening today, Lord, that that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, give them uh, meaning and purpose in life and, and direction. And Lord, uh, I thank you that um, your word, uh, your scriptures are a lamp 
to our feet and a light to our path, that they are profitable for instruction and correction and righteousness and, and, and for encouragement. And, and Lord, we, we trust your word because it's proven true. We just talked about it today, all these scriptures talking about Messiah. And, and then Yeshua came and lived them out. What the, what the prophets wrote, Messiah Yeshua lived. Mm -hmm. Lord, we want to embrace that. We pray for our, uh, specifically our Jewish uh, brethren today, our Jewish family and friends, that they would also have open hearts and open minds to hear what you would speak to them during this season. Yes. And Lord, I ask you to um, bless my brother Stuart and his wife Chantal as they spend the next couple months in Israel, as they meet with uh, uh, friends and family as well, and also uh, their ministries would flourish God and that you would bless them and guide them and protect them every step along the way. Thank you for this platform on Facebook Live. And we, uh, we, we say Yeshua is alive and uh, he's coming back. So we want to walk with you, Lord, and give you the glory for everything we say and do. And we pray it in your, your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a delight, uh, Highland, today as usual, and uh, thank you everyone for sharing your time with us. And uh, you be, folks, be blessed. Intimacy with Yeshua is the source of being blessed and uh, being a blessing to those around. And uh, we'll be back in touch when we're going to pick up these weekly episodes. Shalom, everyone. Sounds good. Shalom. God bless you. You too. Shalom. <laughs>